just like that we're back at it doing some soil testing today so i'm going to get some of that caught on camera and how i do it and i'll give you the details on how i send everything off and then also the plan is to do a little shed hunting with my shed dog remy stay with us today we'll hopefully have a good fun day and do some learning and maybe we'll even find some deer antlers here we go all right let's talk about this so this is our little, little funnel that comes down at the end of a logging road and opens up we get a stand in that cedar tree and a rifle stand set up on the edge uh, you can't see it from right here but it's a tripod if you look really close you might be able to see it but it blends in actually really good so now um, it's a little frozen but thankfully the ground has enough moisture i have my regular sharp shovel i'll stab in the ground get down about four five inches and uh, scrape up some good dirt try to avoid keeping sticks and leaves and roots in my sample i'll be filling my little sample bag that i got from whitetail institute up to this line now this is like i said a little less than a quarter of an acre not even a quarter about a fifth of an acre plot try to test the whole plot to get a consensus of what the average ph is let's go ahead and start i'll start right here where i am now i'm just gonna stomp on my shovel ground's a little frozen flip it up can do this usually pretty well got some pretty good roots in here i'm gonna get down and i'm just gonna get a little bit on the tip of my shovel open my bag up get a, get a good clean glove and just sprinkle a little bit in you don't have to do a bunch because you're gonna stop and do 10 of these to fill that bag up to that line so then i just flip my existing grass back pat it down and she'll take back but uh this is a rye plot actually right now it's perfect i'm gonna take a little bit of dirt off the top there sprinkle it in a bag little more i like that fine crummy dirt it doesn't have to be sometimes it's a little wet some people dry it out uh you do not have to you might pay a little bit more in shipping if it's like super wet but they can test it So then all you gotta simply do is you get your dirt, give it a good shake so it's nice and even. I'm up to the line, hold my bag in. These bags come with a little, oh, it's almost like a bread tie up top, but I just get a good little fold, try to keep it even, fold it. It's a little easier to do when it's against your body, but I'm trying to get this on camera. Fold it, two, three folds. And you just take that and bend it back. Take that and bend it back. And then once I get, I have 10 food plots and I test every single food plot. Once I get every plot tested, I will put this in a box, label it with the appropriate stickerage that comes with it, take it to my local UPS store and ship this to them. And whenever they receive it, they will email me results of my dirt within 24 hours. That I'd stop and take them in and explain kind of how I do it. And it's really nothing to it. And it's very important for um, food plot if you want your food plot to truly thrive and get the best results i would strongly suggest soil testing it's so easy and uh you'll get a lot of answered questions um, and you can even be like plant specific like i picked on this paperwork that i'm going to plant uh, some brassica down here so i checked the mix that i was going to plant and they'll kind of even tell you how to fertilize accordingly to what's already in the ground so hopefully uh this all comes out good and again i'll share the results with you guys when i get them back so for now i'm going to speed this up i gotta set up a turkey blind then i'm going to continue on do some more shed hunting too okay so as promised here is my soil test that i got from the plot that you watched me soil test in the video i want to talk about a couple things obviously this food plot is a low soil ph you can see your soil ph right over here on the right hand side 
was 5.4, which is very low for what I'm looking to try to plant this fall. This soil test gives me a recommended amount of lime. If I'm gonna plant pure traction, which uh, is what I was planning on putting down there, I need to apply 86 pounds of lime per thousand square feet. Now I know that this plot in particular, uh, my third plot is 7,100 square feet. Thanks to apps and Google Earth, you can draw out your square footage and know exactly how much it is. So then I just take 7.1 times 86 pounds, and that's how many pounds of pellet lime I'm going to apply to that plot here as soon as possible so the lime can start working in the soil to start correcting my soil pH to get it up from there to there. And then I will recheck next year to see my progress. So let's talk a little bit more about the actual soil. So again, here is my pH. Um, this is the desired pH for the crop that I'm trying to grow. On this Whitetail Institute test, they allow you to pick two things uh, and then they can suggest fertilizers for you and such. And then that kind of gets into the nutrients here, which I'll talk about. So they, they break it down on a really easy to read scale. Um, as you can see, my phosphorus is in the low category, my potassium's in the very low, my calcium's in the medium, and my magnesium is in the adequate. And, um, you know, ideally you want everything adequate. It's not going to hurt if it's very high. You can still grow things when things are in the medium. I mean, if I'm being honest, you can grow things how this is right now, but you just won't get as nutritious of a crop as if you get your soil amended to where it needs to be. Underneath that, we get into the CEC. And there's a lot of videos out there describing CEC. I think the easiest way that I can pick up on and understand what CEC is to me, the lower this number, the sandier and more fine sandy your soil is. The bigger the number, the more clay or thicker your soil is. So here I have a picture of a little chart just that kind of breaks down the CEC in like the categories for uh, what a sandy soil CEC looks like versus a clay soil and everything in between. Can be good and can be bad at the same time because if you had a 5.4 pH and your CEC was 25, that's going to take a lot more lime to get your pH up. The good thing about having sandy soil and... Uh, lower pH is it'll take a little bit less lime and it'll come up a little bit quicker but the bad thing about that is it will come down a little bit quicker so it's kind of a catch-22 so I'm still getting a grasp on that but that's just a little way that I've been able to understand exactly what CEC does. Uh, organic matter is just like the uh, little bugs, worms, everything that's in the soil that is just what you want in your soil. You you want to have pretty decent organic matter. I think this is still on the low side. Uh, when you see when you see organic matter up to like eight nine percent, that's that's pretty good. So I do have something there. So I like to see that. Now, if you come down here to the second page, it says please select one fertilizer group from the list. So I picked two crops. So they they draw out what fertilizing I need for both. So here's what's important is to get these raised, you would apply fertilizer. Now you don't apply all of this. This is saying fertilizer is available in your area. So there's a great example of not every co-op has triple 10 or six, 12, 12. So you just find what's easy for you to find and then match it. So if you can find triple 20, uh, you know that you'll need uh, again, mine is you use this column if you're going for acre food plots or you use this column if it's less going by 1,000 square feet. And then you just come over here and you, or I'm going to use triple 20. And then you're going to need 6.89 pounds per 1,000 square feet. So I would take 6.89 times 7.1, which is my square footage of my plot. And then I would get my poundage of fertilizer of triple 20 I would need. Now... It says triple 20 and this is pure phosphate and this is potash. So that's just that much extra phosphate and potassium I need on top of the triple 20 in order for me to get my plot to where it needs to be nutrition wise. So I would have to also put this down. But you see, if I was planting beets and greens, it suggests no phosphate and it just suggests a higher amount of um triple 20 or triple 10, whatever, 
the, the moral of the story is you need to pick one row and not everything in a column. So you just pick one row, what's best for you, what you can get your hands on, and that will take care of that. And then again down here on the lime, um, this is what I'm planting with. This scenario, since they're both the same pH, desired 6.5, this desire 6.5, and so does this. Um, in this scenario, it calls both of them call for 86 pounds of lime per thousand square feet. Or if you're having if your food plot's two acres, you would do 3,750 pounds of lime per acre. So you'd have to multiply that by two. Since my plots are smaller, this is what I would do. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to take a second and review my soil tests. And that's kind of a basic rundown of what all this means. Uh, I hope this has been helpful to you. Obviously, I have quite a bit of work to do. And I got some lime to put down. So uh, the work never ends, but that's okay. It's all part of it, and it's what I love to do. So until next time, thanks for watching.